I'm just measuring the activity of a sample of strontium-90, which is a beta emitter, as a function of distance. At the moment I've got the Geiger tube about 2 centimetres from the front of the sample. You can hear by the monitor the number of clicks is an indication of the activity. Now I'll move that away to 3 centimetres. You can hear it's decreasing. 4 centimetres. 5 6 7 8 9 centimetres and lastly 10 centimetres. Now the background activity in this room is about 30 counts per minute so that's about 0.5 becquerel, which you could subtract from the count. Now in this video, I'm going to have a look at how to plot the data that we've collected from the activity versus distance demonstration. So in the first column here, column A, I've got the distance in centimetres. You can see it's 5, 6, 7, all the way through to 14 centimetres. Now I've converted that to metres in the next column, so I've just divided by 100. So 5 centimetres divided by 100 is 0.05 centimetres. So I fill that all the way down. Now in the next column I've got the activity of the uh, radioactive sample at that distance. Now it's measured in counts per 30 seconds. So what I did was zero the counter, start the stopwatch, let it run for 30 seconds, and then uh, took the reading of the count after 30 seconds and you can see here it's 3021 then I repeated that when I had it at 6 centimetres and it was 2086 and so on. Now you can see it's getting smaller as you'd expect. Now the next thing, next thing to do is to convert that to Becquerel so I need to divide the count by 30 so if I divide 3021 by 30 I get the activity in Becquerel. The trouble is there's some background radiation in the room now you'll notice down here, I've got background count was 32 counts in 30 seconds. Now if you divide 32 by 30, you get it as 1.0 becquerel. That is 1.0 counts per second. Now we can take that background off the uh, activity to get a corrected activity. So this column here, uh, column D, I've got the activity, but that's a corrected activity. Now if you have a look at the formula, the first formula, it says C4 divided by 30. Now C4 is the count in 30 seconds. And then I've divided by 30 to get it down to counts per second, which is Becquerel. And then I've subtracted one because there was one background, one Becquerel of background radiation, um, basically as a zero error. So I've done that for each of these down, the, down this column uh, for each of the distances. Now what I'll do is plot distance versus the activity. So I'm going to put the distance along the horizontal axis. So I'll select that and I'll put the activity in the vertical axis. So insert a scatter plot and there it is there. Now it looks like a nice inverse relationship of some sort and we don't know whether it's 1 over x or 1 over x squared but it's certainly inverse. So Let's have a look. We should add some titles here to make it obvious. So up the side is the activity. And that's A, and that's in Pickerel. And then down the bottom here, this is the distance. And we can call that D or R for radial distance, and that'll be in metres. Okay, so we've got the two there. Um, now, the next thing to do is to add a trend line. Now, it's not going to be a linear trend line. It'll be some sort of power relationship, either 1 over x or 1 over x squared. So I'll go to this and choose power relationship, and I'll display the equation, and I'll display the r squared. I'll just bring this up higher. And I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it properly. Put up to 12 point. 
Now what you'll notice is it says y is equal to 0.2479x to the power of negative 1.997. Now that's almost x to the negative 2, in other words, inverse square. The negative just means 1 over, and the 2 is the squared. So to linearize that, what I'd have to do is plot the distance squared, 1 over the distance squared along the bottom, and activity up the side. So I've already calculated here 1 over distance squared. So the distance was 0.050, and this value here of 400 is just 1 divided by 0.050 squared. If you look at the formula, it's 1 divided by B4 to the power of 2, and B4 was just the distance. So I've done that all the way down that column. Now I've repeated the activity column at the end. For Excel, the first column out of a pair you plot will be the horizontal uh, axis. So I want 1 over d squared on the horizontal axis, and I want the activity on the vertical axis. So let's choose these two and insert a scatter plot. Now this time, it should be linear because we've tried to linearize it. So what we'll do is, look, let's add, add some labels first because this will be important. So again, it's the activity A in Becquerel up the side and down the bottom, it's going to be one over distance to the power of two. Okay, now you can fix that up better than that later on. You can format it properly. Let's have a look at a trend line for this. Now it's going to be a linear trend line, so linear is okay. Let's have a look at getting some um, equations. Now display the equation on the chart, and what you'll see there, the equation, I'll just make it a bit bigger, we're going up to 12 point, and we'll see the equation is uh, equal to 0.2495x, so that's the linear part, and there, this the C intercept, which is, or the intercept on the y axis, minus 0.3. Now that's pretty small, minus 0.3 is way, way down here. So in fact, it's so close, it should be zero, because at a zero distance, um, one over zero effectively is an, is an infinite distance, so the activity at an infinite distance would be zero. Now, what you can do is go back and make that zero. So I'll set the intercept as zero and we'll still display the R squared. Now, to show it going through the zero, let's go make it go backwards by, you can see here it's 50. So one over D squared is 50 there. So let's go backwards, 50. So we put a 50 in here and that will show that going back to zero. Now, the R squared is 0.9992, which is really, really high. So that means that equation, Y equals 0.2478X, is an exceptionally good fit for that data. So it's good, reliable data. And what it's saying is that the relationship between activity and distance is activity equals 0.2478 over distance squared. So that confirms that it's a nice um, inverse square relationship, as you'd expect. Okay, I'll stop there.